what's the biggest swing and miss of your career? And and to your credit, there haven't been many, but what one, what stands out the most? Um, I feel like there's only one. Um, and it was one where it was probably the most important thing to ever happen to me in reporting. Um, it was, and I don't even want to say it was a swing and a miss because swing and a miss sort of means like, you know, I was like, I kind of like tried for something and didn't get like this one. It was right. And then it was wrong, um, but it was instructive. So it was Antonio Brown getting traded to the bills uh, from the Steelers to the bills. And, you know, that was the year he showed up in like the fur coat of the playoff game. And like, it was clear he was getting traded somewhere. I got the scoop. I was pretty sure the deal was happening. Um, and I knew the terms and, you know, I got it from a really, really, really good source. And I called some people, but I had, I mean, my source was rock solid. So I report Antonio Brown is close to a deal with the bills. And that was like 1130 night. So I go on TV. Um, I, you know, do a victory lap, do this whole thing. And then I wake up at five in the morning to text messages. And I'm, I'll never forget this. I got a text from my boy, Mike Arafolo. And all it says is, what did you do? And I'm like, shit, like what could possibly have happened? Well, it turned out that the deal fell through. Um, he was, didn't want to go there, whatever, wasn't going there. Uh, and they put out a statement. It was like, you know, we explored Antonio Brown and, and yeah. you know, it didn't end up happening, whatever. So I was, and I was right. The deal was close. It was about to be done and it didn't happen. Um, but what happened, and that, you know, and that sucked. Okay. Like I woke up, it was panic. I had to do like four interviews. I remember I talked to Deadspin for like 45 minutes. I went through everything, did radio interviews, like did the whole, like, let me, let me tell you everything that happened. Right. But the, the best thing that happened was, is I didn't have information from all sides during that trade. I didn't, I had a great source, rock solid source. And I had another source tell me the terms, but I didn't have it from all sides. And what that forced me to do is every time I report anything now, you got to get it from all sides. You got to admit, like, if you're going to do a trade, there's three sides at least. So, and I've lost plenty because I just didn't have it good enough. Yeah. And so that sort of embarrassment or whatever you would say, um, you know, basically changed the way I reported for the rest of my career. Yeah, even though you hadn't, you didn't actually report that it was a, a done deal. Um, yeah, but like, you know, you're right, that's true. But if I'm, or Schefter, or whoever, is going to say a deal is close, like, that thing better happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we should... Like people should have people should know us well enough. Where like if we say it's close, that means that thing is getting finalized, and it was, but it wasn't. Um, and anyway, that was you know one of the more important things to ever happen in my career. Yeah, and I I get obviously wanting to avoid that backlash, but at the same time, as a fan, I think we also want to know when when deals are being talked about or rumored and and close and and that's and hard. Don't happen. It's one of the anyway. hard things for us, it really yeah. is because. You got to hold back because sometimes, you know, it's like the observing of a phenomenon changes the phenomenon, right? Yeah. Um, the reporting of a deal sometimes can change it. You know, What's, so that's that's hard. 